Hey guys, in my last video we talked about VLANs, what those were and how we could use them. Today, we're gonna get our hands dirty and we're gonna put the theory into practice. We will be defining the VLANs logical groups, we're gonna be configuring the VLANs in PFSense, in the switch, and finally in the access point. And we will also be setting up firewall rules so that we can take full advantage from the entire setup. Now, I have put the timestamps in the description below, but of course, you're more than welcome to watch the entire video, also because it will really help out the channel. Before we get too excited, we must first define our VLANs. The VLANs that we need are an office VLAN with an ID of 10, and this is for my office devices, an IoT VLAN with an ID of 20, and that's your Alexas, your smart plugs, your bulbs, etc. A media VLAN with ID of 30, and that's your phones, your tablets, and your TVs a kid's VLAN with the ID of 40, and a guest's VLAN with the ID of 50. So, five super simple VLANs. Okay, and now for the fun part. We're going to be configuring our VLANs in PFSense. First things first, let's open a browser, head on to our PFSense address, which should be our default gateway. Man. All right, now let's go on to interfaces, assignments, and VLANs. So the first thing that we need to do is define our VLANs. The first, the, actually the first thing you need to notice is where it says parent interface, well, we want to select LAN. The VLAN tag, let's put 10, which is our VLAN tag ID. VLAN priority, let's leave this at zero for now. However, this is an interesting concept and we might do something in the future about it, okay? And then description, well, let's call office. If you see, I had already done this before, but I forgot to pr press the record button because I am professional. <laughs> All right, next thing, let's click add again. Uh, make sure parent network is LAN. VLAN tag, let's put 20, priority zero. And this one, let's call it IoT. It's the same for all the five VLANs. Now we've defined our five VLANs, we need to assign them. So let's click where it says interface assignments. And as you can see, there's already two interfaces here. Let's add them one by one. So add the office, add the IoT, add the media, add the kits, add the guests. Hit save. As far as VLANs definition and assignments, that's all we need. But we're still at the link layer. So in order to be able to operate at the network layer, you're going to have to create networks for each individual VLAN. So in order to do that, just click where it says OPT1, option one, um, and let's click on enable interface. So this is our VLAN 10, so let's call it office. So now we know it's the office. On IPv4 configuration, let's set this to static IPv4. Now there are many ways to create different subnets, okay? but. Since this one is for our home, or for my home at least, I'm going to be using the identifier of the VLAN as part of the network ID, okay? And this is very helpful because when the IP is assigned to a device, you will be able to look at that IP address and immediately know uh, which VLAN that IP is associated to. So instead of 192, let's go with a 10.0. And now I'm going to put dot 10 because 10 is the VLAN tag ID dot one. Okay, and this is going to be my network. Now, in order to have 200 plus hosts, let's just select a network mask, or in this case, a CIDR, same thing really, of 24. There's no upstream gateway. And as far as the reserve networks, we're gonna leave this blank for now because we're gonna be configuring this later in the firewall rules, okay? So let's hit save. Apply changes, let's go back to assignments. This is gonna be the same process for all of them, okay? So I'm gonna do a couple and then I might fast forward the video, let's see. So option two, enable interface, don't forget to enable it. Let's click here, call it IoT. Let's keep the same naming convention, IoT. IPv4, let's select static IPv4. And when it goes address, let's call this 10.0.20.1. Why 20? Well, because our VLAN ID is 20. Now, this is a kind of a convention I'm following, but you don't have to follow that. You can use 
your network masks, for example, to specify the subnet that you want. But I find that, especially if you're a beginning, that might be a little bit complicated. So this one is, well, you know, it's a simple way of doing it. Let's just go here, select number 24 for the CIDR, no upstream gateway, save. Apply changes, again, assignments. Now, oops, sorry, assignments. And let's do option three, which is media. Enable the interface, call this media. IPv4, 10.0.30.1.24, and save. Apply. We have now created the subnets for each individual VLAN. The next thing that we need to do is, well, we want to assign IPs within these VLANs to any host or any client that is trying to get an IP, okay? So what's the best way to do that? Well, we're going to have to set up a DHCP server. Um, and we're not gonna do just one DHCP server, but we're going to configure one DHCP server per each individual VLAN. And PFSense is really, really cool because they make this actually super easy to configure. So you just go and services, and let's go to DHCP server. And look at that. We already have all our possible networks available here listed. We just need to tick one at a time and configure them. So let's start with the office. And in the office, let's enable uh, this uh, DHCP server. And let's scroll down to where it says address pool range. Now, this is our subnet range. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a pool from 10.0.10.20. And we're gonna go all the way to 254. Now, why did I do this? Well, that's because this leaves me 20 IP addresses uh, that I can you know, assign to other hosts that I can just configure statically. So let's just go down here now. Here where it says uh, DNS, uh, DNS servers, you can configure specific DNS servers for each individual VLAN. For now, I'm just gonna leave this blank because it's using Unbound, which is its internal DNS resolver or recursive DNS resolver. Uh, so let's just leave this blank for now. Let's just click Save and apply the changes. Okay, the next one, we're gonna go into IoT, do exactly the same, enable go down here. Now for IoT, I don't really need reserved IPs. Well, okay, let's let's just have a few just in case. So I'm just gonna copy this here and put the 10 and then go all the way to 254 and hit save. And don't forget to click apply or these, you know, these changes won't take effect. Now let's go to media, the same, enable. And on my media, I also want from the 10 all the way to 254. And let's go and save this. Okay, saved. Apply changes. That is it. We just defined our VLANs, assigned them to the interfaces, and now we configured the DHCP server for each individual VLAN. The next step that we need to do is something very important. We need to set up firewall rules. I know it's a lot of steps, but you'll become a pro at this in no time, I promise you. So let's go to firewall. Let's create, click on rules and let's click where it says office. Click on add. We're gonna have a pass rule that's going to come from the interface office in the IPv4 and we're gonna do any and that's it. This essentially is gonna let all of the traffic through to anything on the office interface. Click save and apply changes. And now let's do the same on all of the other ones. Let's go to IoT, add, pass, any, and save. I hope I'm not doing this too fast and I'm missing something, but I think it's fine. With this, we guarantee that when we connect to the, um, to the VLAN port and the switch, we can access our own default gateway because there's a risk that you know the firewall might block it. For the next part, we're going to be configuring our switch. Let's go. Okay, now, if you don't know how to find the address of your switch, you can go onto PFSense, check this out, go to status, DHCP leases, and then in here, 
you can look for your switch. So in my case, mine is located at this address. So I'm just gonna copy that, open another window, put it there. All you really wanna do is you wanna say, okay, I wanna map this port of my switch to this VLAN. So you just come here, this is the, the main, the, 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 the home address. You go, you click where it says VLAN. Again, this is not the most intuitive uh, user interface in the planet. There's a lot better options, but they, you know, they cost more. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to create another VLAN. Let's do one for, let's do one for the kids. So we, I already have the Office IoT and Media or 10, 20 and 30. Let's create a new VLAN and let's call this VLAN 40. And I don't want VLAN, I don't want it on port one. So I'll start with all of this grayed out just to be easy. And let's do apply. Let's just say my son, who's tiny now, he doesn't have a computer yet, but um, let's just say my son has uh, a computer laptop and he wants to plug in his laptop into port four of my switch. So what do I do? I just click on modify. I go where it says zero four, I'm gonna put it green like this and apply and then on port 4 up here I'm going to modify and just put this on gray and apply so that means now that this port port number 4 is going to be configured for VLAN 40 so if my son comes in with the computer and he plugs in the cable into port 4 he's going to be allocated to port to VLAN 40. If you notice here on port 09, I have a bunch of things in here. I have all of my VLANs flowing in here. And this is where I have my PFSense fanless computer connected to. Nine is part of VLAN one, which is the default VLAN. It's assigned here with the default VLAN, which is one. And then I have this trunk line here saying that VLANs 10, 20, and 30 can flow through it. Now I have a new VLAN, which is VLAN 40, and I want VLAN 40 to flow through from PFSense into the switch. And I also want uh, VLAN 40 to be broadcasted um, in, uh, via Wi-Fi uh, through my access point. So what do I do? Let's just click on modify, and let's just go on ports nine and 10. And by putting in as tag egress member in orange, it just says, okay, they can flow through the cable, that trunk cable on ports nine and 10. Let's hit apply. And we don't need to change this because we do want PFSense to be on VLAN one, and we do want uh, my uh, access point to be on VLAN 10. Now let's configure another one. Let's just say we want VLAN 50 for my guests. And that one, I don't want any port. I just want it going straight into my access point. So let's create a VLAN. Let's call VLAN ID 50. Let's gray out all of these ports apart from nine and 10. Let's click apply. And now as if we scroll down, we can see here that it's not part of any of these things. Okay, uh, VLAN 50 is not part of any port, but it can flow from PFSense and it can be part of my access point. So it will flow through the access point as well. The next and final step is to configure the access point. So since I have a Unify access point, let's check that next. Now, in my case, I have uh, the Unify controller running on Docker. Again, this varies from access point to access point. In my case, I had to reach uh, this IP address, which is, it's the host machine holding the Docker container. Once you reach uh, the Unify, you're gonna click where it says network. So you're gonna click where it says settings, and then you're gonna click where it says networks. We just click on new virtual network. We just put, I'm just gonna put my kids, and I'm going to assign 40. Let's ignore this stuff here for now, and let's just click add, and it's there. Now, this one here, VLAN 50, as you can see, I have disabled it. But if we want to enable, we just click on manage, we go here and we click resume. Now I have, oh, I noticed one thing here, I just called it uh, kids. So let's keep the same naming convention that I've put here, just so that things are nice and tidy. We have here 20, 30, 50, and 40. Now that we have the networks configured, we need to create a dedicated SSID per VLAN. Well, we just click where it says Wi-Fi. Let's do one, so we create a new one. Now let's just call, I'm gonna call it uni, uh, let's call it 40, and let's call it kids. 
password. For now, you know, put something obviously very safe. This is the important part. So where it says network, you're gonna come here and you're gonna select kids. And then all of this is set to auto, but I personally like to put in manual. Uh, I want this on the five gigahertz. Yeah, oh, gigahertz, sorry, I'm Portuguese, so sorry for my uh, English impairments. <laughs> and let's just let the rest as is. I like multicast enhancement, let's put that as well. It's good for like, uh, for streaming and things like that. Click add Wi-Fi network. And that's it. Now we're going to test all of this stuff to see if it works. I have showed you before, I have VLAN 10, which is this one here, assigned to port 11, okay? So now we're on the computer. We already plugged it into that port. So to check, go into the command line and type ipconfig. So I'm in, in fact on VLAN 10, which is my office VLAN. If you didn't have this, um, you have another IP. You just type ipconfig slash release and you hit enter. And then once it releases, you type dot renew like that and then you hit enter. An interesting thing now is that the firewall rules that we have um, allow the traffic. So I can ping my own network. So if I go 10.0.10.1, because of the firewall rules, I get a, re a response, a reply, right? But the problem is I can also ping 10.0.20.1 and I can also ping the 30. So this is not really ideal because all the networks have access to everything, including other networks, and we might not want that. So let's limit this a little bit, shall we? So what we want to do is first, we want to go into aliases and we want to create something called an RFC 1918. So let's call this RFC 1918. This here set to networks we can put here RFC 1918. And then the first address is gonna be 192.168.0.0. And we're gonna put slash 16. We're gonna add another network and we're gonna put 172.16.0.0 and put this dot slash 12. And another network is going to be a class A, which is 10.0.0.0. And it's going to be a CIDR of eight. And we're just going to save this and apply for the changes to take effect. Okay, now that we have the RFC 1918 in place, we can set up firewall rules that will allow, you know, will allow us to block access to other networks. So in order to do that, let's go into the firewall, hit rules, Let's go to Office. Now, I said that I wanted Office to access all the other networks, but um, just for a demonstration purposes, I'm gonna add that rule right here so that you guys can see how it works. So, let's click on Add. Uh, we want the block rule. Interface, it will be Office, IPv4. Let's put the protocol to any, because we wanna block anything. And the source is going to be the Office subnet. So, Office subnet. And the destination is going to be an address or alias. And we're going to put here the RFC 1918. We can also add, so block other networks. It just help us identify the role. So we click save. Now, don't press apply changes straight away, because if you do, remember that we are in the office network, and this blocks access to one of the networks that we're in, which is the 10 dot. In order to circumvent this problem, we can go on and we can click add. And what we will do is we will set up a rule that will allow us to be in our own subnet. So that means we can access all the computers in our subnet. We can access our default gateway, but we won't be able to ping any of the other subnets like the .20 or the .30 or any of those. So let's do pass. Again, interface office IPv4 and let's do any. And then this will be from the office subnet and the destination will be the office subnets. Okay, so we'll just do save. So I'm happy with this. Let's play, uh, let's play, let's press apply changes and that's it. Now let's check here if this works and let's just ping my own default gateway. So it works fine. It means it's, you know, I can access uh, all the other hosts within the network, including my own default gateway. 
And let's just ping the IoT default gateway. And I can't reach it. Let's try and ping the dot 30. And I can't reach it. Dot 40. Can't reach it. Oh, and since we're doing all of them, let's do dot 50 as well. But you get the picture, right? So we won't be able to ping any of this. And the internet. Let's go Google. It's working fine. Now, what we can do is we can apply these rules to all of the other networks. More specifically, I want my IoT network not to definitely not to access any of the other uh, networks. So what we're going to do, we're going to click add. We're going to do a block rule. We're going to do any IPv4 and we're going to go IoT subnet and address or alias and we're going to do RFC 1918 block oops access to other networks looks already here save and now we could we can click apply because i'm not on the iot subnet so let's create another one and this is going to be a pass rule any and it's going to be on iot subnets and the destination is going to be iot subnets and it's going to be access to my own subnet Cool. And you can do the same for all of the other, the other ones. It's going to be exactly the same. But one thing I did want, I wanted Office to access, well, everything. So I'm going to remove my RFC 1918. And I'm going to remove this one because it doesn't make sense. Because all I want is just this rule right here. And now I have access again to all the other subnets. Now, let's just imagine you say, okay, Philippe, but I want my media device, I want my phone to actually be able to access the, uh, the server that you have in your office. How do I do that? Well, we can create another rule for that. So we just go into here, we have a pass rule, interface gonna be media, address family APV4, protocol, let's put any, and then in here, the source is going to be my, where are we? Media, right? Media, yes. My media subnet, and I want to access, I'll just put an address or an alias, and I can just type here. So let's just say my server, for example, is on 10.0.10. I don't know, 24. Then basically I just put here, for example, my Jellyfin. Is it Jellyfin? Plexi, let's just put Plexi, I forgot the name. And I click Save, I press Apply, and, and that's pretty much it. Then this network right here will be able to ping and access this, um, this particular destination, okay? And that's it, we've done it. If you reached this far, congratulations because it's been quite a journey and you deserve it. I know this can be a little bit daunting at first, but don't worry. As soon as you start using PFSense and configuring these things, you're gonna get it under your fingers in no time. I hope you guys have really enjoyed the video, and if you did, please don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe to the channel. Oh, and one more thing. If there's anything you guys would like to see in the channel, not just network related, but in computing in general, please let me know and I'll do my best to accommodate. For now, my name is Philippe, and I will see you next time. Look after yourselves, and thanks.